equator is very warm. Keep this in mind. Warm air rises and creates low pressure. Cold air sinks and creates high pressure. So at the equator, air begins to move upward. Okay. Remember, it's going to move up into the troposphere, and the troposphere is up to six, 10 kilometers high. Okay. As it moves up, it is creating a low-pressure system. It rises, cools down, spreads out, and begins to sink back down at approximately 30 degrees. Then it will spread back out. It makes a circular look, loop. It's um, convection. Okay, So as a result, it creates a low-pressure system at the equator, and that's called the equatorial low. Now, as it sinks, it creates a high-pressure system, and that's called the subtropical high. Okay? Now, let's jump to the North Pole. North Pole is very cold, so it has a very high-pressure system. The wind, the air is going to move down south till it gets to about 60 degrees, and it begins to warm and rise. Okay? But let's stop there just for a second. There's more than just a convection going on here. We have this subtropical high, so this air begins to move in this direction. You have two fronts hitting here of air, and it forces the air has to go somewhere, so it starts going up. It's a convergence boundary. Okay, So it rises from convergence, and a little convection, but convergence and it creates a low-pressure system right here. And that is called the subpolar low. Okay? Now, let's get back to the, this. It flows down, begins to rise, spreads back out, and makes a little cell, sinks back down. Okay? This is called the polar cell. This... Let me complete this. It makes a loop. Whoops, wrong way. Okay, and this is the feral cell, and this is the Hadley cell. Okay, now the same thing happens in the south. Again, warm air rises, spreads out, begins to sink. And then makes a loop. That's the Hadley cell. Okay. The cold air sinking is going to create a high pressure called the subtropical high. Okay. From the high, it's going to spread this way. From the South Pole, it's a high pressure system. It's going to flow north. Right here at this boundary, it starts to flow upward, creates a low pressure system called the subpolar low. Okay, low pressure here, and then it's going to spread back out and make a cell. This is the feral cell, and this is the polar cell. Okay, so now we have these cells. Now, the reason why we're talking about that is because we now have identified why we have highs and low. At the equator, we have a low, then at 30 degrees, it's high, 60 degrees, and then high at the very top, 60 degrees is low. So that's going to dictate the direction of the wind, because remember, it's going to flow from high to low. So now, the wind begins to flow from high to low, just like this. However, it's going to deflect to the right because the Coriolis effect, okay? So, now this gets a little tricky. If you're walking down this arrow, to the right is in this direction. So the wind is going to flow, or you can draw it like this. It's gonna deflect to the right, okay? And these are called the, uh oh, I'm running out of space, polar easterlies. And remember, winds are named from where they originate from. So they're moving from the east to the west. I think I like this arrow the best. From the east to the west, the polar 
easterlies. Now the sub here we have another high and a lo another low pressure, so the wind is going to go in this direction and it's going to be deflected to the right. Okay, these are the westerlies. Okay, now we again we're going to go from high to low. As we go from high to low, it's going to deflect to the right. As you walk down this, it's to the right. Okay, or if you don't like that, you can draw the arrow like this. And these are the trade winds. Okay, now in the south, everything deflects to the left. Again, you always go from high to low. Okay, so we're going from high to low and we're going to deflect to the left. Okay, and as we deflect to the left, we have the trade winds. Okay, I'll do another one. Goes, deflects to the left. Now we're going from high to low, so we're going in the opposite direction. We're going to deflect to the left. Okay, and you know this is west, this is east, so these are the westerlies. Okay, now how about these polar winds? Okay, it's going to deflect to the left, so it's going to go in this direction, deflect to the left, and again deflect to the left, so it's going from east to west, so those are the polar easterlies. Now we have a couple other things that you may be aware of. This 30 degrees, they, these are sometimes called the horse latitudes. Let's call these HL. HL. Because as the wind is, is going upward, okay, it creates an area where sometimes there's very little wind. And then this equatorial low is sometimes called the doldrums. Because there's very little wind there because it's moving upward. So there we go. Uh, I left off the jet streams. Here are the major winds. Let me recap. You have the polar easterlies blowing from the north east. You have the westerlies flowing from west to east. Okay. Uh, then also a little southwest. And then we have the trade winds moving from the north to the uh, west. So moving from east to west and then here are the trade winds again going from east to west then the westerlies from west to east and then the polar easterlies from east to west i hope that helps in understanding global winds thanks for watching and mumu math uploads a new math and science video every day please subscribe and share